Well, here we are, May 9th, 2023. The PLL draft has finished the NCAA Men's Division I tournament and all the other tournaments as well. Don't forget the D1 Women's Tournament, the D2 Tournaments, both men's and women's, the D3, both men's and women's. You know, it's going to be a fun time as we trek toward Memorial Day weekend. And don't forget about the NLL. The NLL is finishing up its road to May as well. So let's get this party started, man. Let's get this party started with the NLL Conference Finals. They have been set. You can see that it is the Colorado Mammoth taking on the Calgary Roughnecks in the West Conference Final. And in the East Conference Final, it's a familiar matchup. The Toronto Rock, the Buffalo Bandits. Um, it's going to be interesting. You look at the quarterfinals results. Um, Buffalo just beat the brakes off Rochester. I only watched the very end of the Calgary Panther City game. What a defensive slugfest that game at the end was. I mean, the goalies were on fire in that game. The most shocking result, obviously, is Colorado beating San Diego off of Eli McLaughlin's, you know, game winner. And then, of course, Toronto beat Halifax. And so it's going to be Calgary, Colorado in the West with Calgary, you know, not having that first game at home. Um, it's going to be like it's going to be like some concerts and stuff like that that's going to conflict. So Calgary said, all right, Colorado, y'all can host first. So the game ones will be on May 11th and May 12th. Notice that's a Thursday and a Friday night. So we're eating good. We are eating good, especially with the NCAA playing game. We are eating good. Eating good lacrosse. Mmm, delicious. The game twos, they'll both be on May 13th. And if there's a game three, they're going to be on May 20th. All those games are going to be on either TSN, TSN Plus, or ESPN Plus. Unlike last week, we don't get the luxury of ESPNU and stuff like that. Like those games, you know, aren't going to, they're going to be a little bit too late, if you get what I mean. They're going to be a little bit too late, you know, after, you know, the Collins Cross that we're going to witness this upcoming weekend. And then the Champions Cup, we we do know. We've been knowing for a little bit. May 27th, May 29th, the first two games of the finals are going to be a primetime slot after the semifinals on ESPNU. And then after the championship, after the NCAA championship, the D1 Men's Championship, It'll be on ESPN 2. will be game two. Oh, boy. That's going to be lit. Let me tell you that much. It's going to be lit. It's going to be a hell of a time in the conference finals. You know, So in the semifinals and beyond, you want to watch out for Buffalo. Buffalo, again, Cloutier. I mean, Dane Smith, the, the great Dane. I mean, Josh Byrne. I mean, my goodness. Buffalo is a wagon. Toronto, you know, Nick Rose, best goalie in the game right now. Dan Dawson, Dan Craig, Tom Schreiber, all those guys just been consistent, consistently hitting for Calgary. As far as goalies go, Christian Del Blanco, or Christian Del Blanco, yeah, yeah. You know, he's he's been playing some pretty good lacrosse, you know, the way the way he defended against Panther City. Again, it crushed my heart to see Panther City lose in that game, but hey. Somebody had to advance. And then, of course, you get, you got guys like Zach Curry or Tanner Cook, Todd Pace. I mean, a, a intriguing bunch for Calgary that's gotten them to that number two seed. And in Colorado, oh, boy, the defending champs, they're back. Zed Williams, I mean, Eli McLaughlin, the hero, Ryan Lee, and then Dylan Ward, of course. Oh, the big goalie, Dylan Ward. It's going to be a good, good, you know, Conference finals. I keep saying semifinals, same thing. Gonna be good. Cannot wait. In any case, here is the men's bracket for Division One, baby. You see it. Duke is the one seed. Virginia, the two. Notre Dame, the three. Maryland, the four. Penn State, the five. Johns Hopkins, the six. Georgetown, the seven. 
and Cornell the eight, you know, and then the play in is the CAA champs, Delaware, and the MAC champs, Maris. And then you have Utah, who won the A Sun. They'll be taking on Notre Dame. Michigan, who won the Big Ten, by the way. Again, the Big Thief. Michigan won the Big Ten. They'll be going on the road to face Cornell. Bryant, who won the America East. They'll be taking on Johns Hopkins. Penn State, you know, gets the take on Princeton, the Ivy League champs. Georgetown gets Yale, the only real, you know, other at large bid. It's the field. Maryland takes on the Patriot League champs, Army. And in Virginia, oh, they get Richmond, who won the 8 n the new 8 n So, so there you go. You've seen my bracket already. You know my Final Four consists of Army, Notre Dame, Virginia, and Duke. And there are a lot of guys you have to watch out for in this tournament. I mean, look at this list that I have compiled Virginia, the, the, the trio, the triplets, Schellenberger, Dickinson, Cormier, all three of those guys, they can pick your pockets, attack you each and every way possible. You know, for Richmond, definitely a team I haven't seen a lot of this year, but when you have guys with names like Lance Madonna, Aiden O'Neill, Dalton Young, you know this is going to be an interesting team. But Virginia, Richmond already played earlier this season, which kind of doesn't make any sense. You know, they're playing the first round, but it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. You can't really fault that quick bus trip. You know what I'm saying? And then for Notre Dame, of course, the Kavanaugh brothers. Also, Eric Dobson and, and other guys as well. For Utah, going to be interesting to see what Tyler Bradbury and company can do. You know, there's also guys like Jordan Hyde, Ryan Steins. I mean, an interesting Utah bunch. For Georgetown, you already know. You already know the trio. Dordovic, Bowen, Riley. You know, a team that was started 0-3, 112 straight off of these three and others. Just, man. Yale, they got guys like Leo Johnson, Chris Lyons, Matt Brandau. You know, a real, a real good bunch. A real, real good bunch. For Maryland, I mean, Brett Macker, absolute stud, Kyle Long, Luke Weirman, going to be real good. And then, of course, the Black Knights, the best defense in the country, in my personal opinion. And a lot of people, you know, you know the, the metrics say so, too. The metrics say so, too. You know, we have Will Cletty, Reese Burrett, Jacob Morin, and, and others. Really solid group. For Johns Hopkins... You got Alex Mazzoni leading the way, along with Jacob Angelus and Russell Melendez. Really, really solid bunch for the resurgent John Topkins Bryant. And, you know, really interesting bunch here. You got Kevin Groninger, Aiden Goltz, Johnny Hackett, uh, a trio that can put up points in bunches, put up points, you know, goals, assists in bunches. Cornell, you already know, CJ Curse. Unreal this year. Gavin Adler. Really, he should win the Tawartan, but he's not. And then Chase Ireland, head goalie. I mean, my goodness. Cornell, really fun team. For Michigan, the resurgent Michigan who has gotten to the tournament for the first time, Michael Bohm, Joshua, Josh Zawada, they led the way. They led the charge for Michigan to not only beat Maryland twice, you know, but win the Big Ten. Duke, oh, you already know. Jake Naso at faceoff. Brennan O'Neill. Dyson William, who's been, you know, stepping up as well. This whole Duke team is a a a force to be reckoned with. A real force to be reckoned with. Delaware. Ty Kurtz, of course. Ty Kurtz. Just another, just another man on another level. JP Ward, Owen Grant. And then for Maris, you have Jojo Pereka. Jameson Embury, I mean, my goodness, what a good, real good bunch here as I have to charge my laptop. <laughs> and then for Penn State, TJ Malone, I mean, really, Matt Trainer, Kevin Winkoff, I mean, my goodness, this Penn State team is unreal. 
you know, and then for Princeton, Coulter McKeskey, Coulter McKesey, excuse me, my bad, Alex Badaro, Jake Stevens. I mean, Princeton was circling wagons all over in the Ivy League tournament, just circling wagons. You know, they were scoring at will in the Ivy League tournament, just scoring at will, you know? So more details about the men's bracket, you know? More details, you got the ESPN Plus playing game, and keep in mind, all these times I have listed are in Central. So this is my time zone, so 6 o'clock tomorrow night will be that playing game on ESPN Plus. I'll find a way to watch it. I'm going to watch this game absolutely. The first round, May 13th, May 14th, you saw all the games listed. Those were in order of the times that they were going to be played. 11 a.m., 1.30, 4 p.m., 6.30 p.m. Beautiful day to watch some lacrosse on May 13th. Beautiful day on May 14th. You get, I don't know, I'd say maybe like 10 hours straight of lacrosse. You know, <laughs> really good stuff. Really good stuff on ESPN. You that first round, the quarterfinals. When it goes down to eight teams, it'll be May 20th and 21st. Same thing there, 11 a.m., 1.30 p.m. on the 20th, the 21st. The semifinals, you might want to you might want to kick up your feet for that. You know, gonna be a real good day on ESPN2 on May 27th, 11 a.m., 1.30 a.m. Gonna be real fun. And then the championship, Memorial Day, May 29th, 12 p.m. That Monday, going to be hectic. Real, real good stuff on Monday. And then, you know, there's some things about the bracket. You know, I know people are going to be asking, oh, well, you know, this and this and such and such happened. And, and, and I don't like this and I don't like that. And it is what it is. And what can you say? It's a very straightforward bracket this year. Unlike last year where you could legitimately argue about Notre Dame being in, which, I mean, they probably should have, but at the same time, I get why they left Notre Dame out. It's kind of a wishy-washy situation there. Unlike that, because of Princeton and Michigan taking some valuable AQs away from some of the other teams, you know, like Yale, Cornell, Johns Hopkins, Maryland, or Penn State, you know, those at large spots got eaten up by those two. We knew the one through three coming in, and we were talking about it throughout the season. We've been talking about it. The one through three were Duke, Notre Dame, Virginia. We just didn't know the order. Very hard to really see them, but ultimately, really because I think Duke won the ACC. They had the best record in the ACC. You know, they didn't have two losses to, you know, each other like Virginia had two losses to Duke. Notre Dame had two losses to Virginia. kind of cancels itself out, even though, you know, Duke has the bad loss to Jacksonville. You know, Virginia has a really technically a good loss to Maryland, but, I mean, it is what it is. Very hard to see that. Four through seven could have had some movement. Again, it's Maryland's best win, which was Virginia, which was the best win out of the team's rank, or out of seeded four through seven, you know. Georgetown just didn't have it. I'm sorry. They didn't have it. They didn't have that type of win that could keep them, you know, from, you know, going up a little bit more. They could have been a six, but I think seven is solid. Michigan, you could have flipped the coin. You really could have flipped the coin with them. I really, I, I really, you know, the thought came into my mind, and it came into a lot of people's minds that Michigan could be a seed. But it is what it is. You know, can't can't fault anybody for anything there. Transfer portal is open, by the way, so just keep that in mind. And you look at the conference breakdown, I mean, it's the same old stuff as usual. The ACC got three teams in. The Big Ten got four. The Ivy League got three. And everybody else got just one. That's the way the tournament works. 17 teams enter. One will be champion by the end of May. So... There you go with that. You know, there you go with that. But wait, we're not done digesting the bracket. We're not done digesting this bracket either. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Because some people got mad 
on Twitter and other spaces, they got mad because their team didn't make it. And I'll tell you why they didn't make it. Oh, boy. The first team left out was Denver. And these are just the best wins against, you know, teams that might have made the tournament field. You know? You know, most of these are wins against teams that are in the tournament field. And the losses, the losses tell you the story. Denver and Penn were really the two teams that were, you know, they needed Michigan and Princeton to, you know, kind of lose so as to not have them take any spots. Instead, Michigan and Princeton took those spots from Denver and Penn. It would have been those two had it not been, you know, we still would have had three Ivy League teams. I don't understand what people's issue is. Again, look at the resumes. You have to look at the entire season's work. This is not this is not cherry picking or anything. You can't just cherry pick and stuff like that. You can't say this is college basketball. This is like college football. You have to look at the entire body of work in order to get you know get what we can finagle out of this in a such a small field where there's only 75 teams in the B1, you know, you have to figure something out. And only the best of the best of the best can be in this field along with the AQs. And I don't understand what people's issue is with the automatic qualifier. Don't understand that. Do not understand it at all. You need the automatic qualifier. You need this because Otherwise, people are going to whine and cry and moan about, you know, oh, well, the entire ACC is in yet again this year, or the entire Ivy League is in yet again this year, or five of the six Big Ten teams are in again this year, you know. Darn, Big East and Patriot League will never get two teams in again, y'all. You know, you just have to, it's, again, you have to play better. That's one thing. The whole body of work matters. That's the other thing. You have to, everybody has to play better, you know. And, you know, really it's about Denver and Penn here. These other teams, I, I, I'll get into that last bullet point in a minute. But, you know, Denver got a win against Utah. They got two wins against Villanova. They win against North Carolina. But ultimately, that wasn't enough at Yale because they lost to Yale. That is one of the things that, you know, head to head is one of the criteria that the committee looks at. And unfortunately, Denver lost out on that. So, yeah. So Denver lost out on that. That's really the reason why, you know, one of the reasons why they're not in. And the other reason is they got beat up by Georgetown twice. You know, they had to win the Big East tournament. They really had to, be, to win the Big East tournament. You know, it might have impacted Georgetown had Georgetown lost because of what happened this past Saturday. But at the same time, at the same time, Denver needed to win the Big East. Denver needed to win it. Beating Villanova, even though I thought at the time that, you know, beating Villanova would be enough for Denver. It's May Madness. You got to do more. So... Denver's out for multiple reasons. Penn, same thing. You have a good win against Georgetown, against Georgetown, who was struggling at the beginning of the year. You have the win against Yale. You have the win against Princeton. But then you look and you see, hmm, 13 games. Hmm, 7-6. and six. Hmm, a loss to Brown. Villanova. Princeton. You know, the other game against Princeton, Cornell, Penn State, Duke. Yeah, Penn was one of those teams that was also very inflated by the RPI and the SOS. And ultimately, they just didn't have enough either. Seven and six is not going to get you in, you know, unless you win the conference. Unless you win it, really, it's not going to get you in. And ultimately... You know, it was just too much. Too much of a factor of wins and losses. They just didn't have enough. It just, 
you see how this doesn't balance out. You know, the three wins, you really kind of cancel the Princeton, you know, games out. And, I mean, the losses just overtake what Penn can do. For the other four teams here, you have Rutgers, you have North Carolina, you have Villanova, and you have Syracuse. Rutgers, plain and simple. All Rutgers needed to do was just maybe, maybe, you know, win a game in the Big Ten tournament. Maybe, maybe, you know, beat somebody. Maybe beat Maryland. Couldn't do that. Couldn't do that two times, actually. They could beat Ohio State, which is insane to me. They beat Michigan. But that's the only win they had in Big Ten play. You have to win games in your conference. You know, a win against Princeton and a win against Utah isn't going to do it. When you lose five of your six Big Big Ten games in the conference, and then you lose the opener of the tournament, not going to cut it. North Carolina, same type of thing. Same type of thing. They didn't have anything. Johns Hopkins was it. They they held on to that for so long, and ultimately, you know, getting smacked by Notre Dame twice did the men. All North Carolina probably had to do, and a lot of people are saying this, and a lot of people who you know know the game even better than I do, you know, said, "Hey, North Carolina, all you got to do is beat one of Notre Dame, Duke, or Virginia, and boom." That'll bump your RPI up. That'll bump, you know, that'll bump all the metrics up in your favor. But North Carolina, sluggish, sluggish, sluggish team that couldn't get off their own back. And thus, you know, their best win was get aside from Johns Hopkins was against Syracuse, which isn't going to cut it. Villanova. Unfortunately for Villanova, they lost to Denver twice. They lost to Georgetown. Beating up the rest of the Big big East does not matter. I mean, come on, Providence, St. John's, Marquette. Yeah, Marquette had some good wins. I don't care. But it's Marquette. They, they, they weren't doing anything. You know, a loss to Brown also stings somehow because it's Brown. I don't think Brown was very good this year. No, nobody, nobody thought that. And ultimately, you know, the second loss to Denver did them in as – Again, their spot probably would have been taken anyway if they had to face Georgetown again because I don't think anybody would stop at Georgetown. don't think anybody was. And then Cuse, I don't understand. I, I really don't understand the Syracuse agenda here. I have gotten into a couple arguments with Syracuse fans on Twitter myself. And I don't understand. I don't understand what this is here. Your best win was against Princeton. That's it. North Carolina maybe too. But you lost in North Carolina, so that kind of cancels itself out. And then the other games you had, you didn't beat anybody. You didn't beat anybody else in non-conference. You didn't beat anybody in conference either. You couldn't beat Duke twice. You couldn't beat Notre Dame. You couldn't beat Virginia. You couldn't beat Maryland or Johns Hopkins. You couldn't beat anybody. Eight and seven ain't going to get it done. Your RPI is garbage. 22. Not going to get it done. You know, I looked over the rest of the schedule one more time. I'm like, no, this ain't it. This ain't cutting it. This schedule ain't cutting it. So, trash. Syracuse fans, I'm sorry. You're going to have to win next year. You're going to have to win. All you got to do is win, and maybe you'll get in. Win more games. Sorry. Disgusting. Don't ever, don't, don't ever try and say, oh, well, there, there's too many Ivy League teams in the tournament. <laughs> schedule better. I don't want to see a bunch of scrubs on your schedule, you know, because your best win against was against Princeton. All the rest of your wins were against scrubs or North Carolina. And then the PLL draft. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The draft tonight. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about the Atlas first. I mean, they got Gavin Adler at number one. Kind of expected. But again, this is the guy who should win the Tawartan. He should win it, but he's not going to because, you know, it's an attackman award. I mean, Brett Mocker. 
also on defense. Sandra Dixon, you know, Peyton Rizaka from Loyola, you know, very good defense for Loyola in a couple games that I watched them again. I mean, did you see the masterclass of Loyola against Maryland or in like the first couple weeks of the season? And then Kyle Long at midfield for Maryland. So they so Atlas got it good. Redwoods also got it pretty good. Cole Kirst from Syracuse, my goodness. Um, Ryan Teblin, Owen Grant, Zach Cole, really good bunch of guys there. Really good bunch of guys. You know, you know, there's also the Chrome. Chrome also had a pretty interesting draft. I mean, they got a guy who had over what 400 goals in Cross Ferrara from Salisbury. In the fourth round, they got him in the fourth round. Jack Myers, they got him from Ohio State. Sam Handley for Penn. You know, a really interesting Penn squad. And then you had Troy Hettinger, or Hettinger, excuse me, from Jacksonville. That's a pretty good draft right there. Archers also had a pretty good draft. Mike Sisselberger from Lehigh. Connor Maher. Piper Bond, Cam Myers, you know, from Lehigh and working like a pen in Loyola, respectively. Really interesting bunch there. I would say that moves the needles per se, but again, this is the PLL. <laughs> I mean, it, it, grabbing literally anybody can make it break your day. And then the other part of the bracket, the other teams in the bracket, the Whip Snakes. A lot of people are saying the Whipsticks won this draft, and I am not inclined to disagree. I, I, I can't disagree with you there. I can't disagree because, I mean, when you get Tucker, when you get Tucker Dordovic, Petey LaSala, I mean, two guys that have been monsters this year. You know, Garrett Ledman, who's been on a tear himself, and Elijah Gash from Albany. That's a real good draft. That's a real good draft right there. Chaos, same thing. Really good draft. I mean, Will Bowen, Ty Kurtz. I mean, that's a pairing that I can see for many seasons to come. Brian Menicus, Menicus uh, from Georgetown as well. Nick Rowlett on faceoff. Who, again, Michigan resurgent because of guys like him. And then Levi Anderson from St. Joe's. Really good draft for them. I know a lot of Water Dogs fans. Um, I wasn't again. I wasn't really paying as much attention, but I do know a lot of people were clamoring for Thomas McConfey, and the dogs got him. Really nice midfielder from, from Virginia, Alex Mazzoni from Johns Hopkins, Chris Fake from Notre Dame, and then James Riley, the face-off guy from Georgetown. Really, really good draft for the dogs. And then the Cannons, all they could do was grab a couple guys. You know, they didn't have much that they could get. Matt Campbell for Villanova and then Grant Onman from High Point. So Cannons probably had the weakest part of the draft because they only had two guys. But honestly, if I am a water dog, chaos, whip snakes, or, you know, you know, even Atlas. I, I, I am I am loving what I'm seeing right now. I am loving what I'm seeing. I'm loving what I got as far as guys in the draft. I'm loving what I got. Man. Man. Whew. Whew. Boy. Whew. God, we got a long way to go to Memorial Day. I'll see you all once again by that day. Take care, have a good night, and I'll see you on Sunday.